Brown has gone to him this time. Kind of a game without that beforehand. Means nothing. Scotland could have been taken high. Brian went through but left the football behind. Murphy, in very good form, goes inside the forward 50. Favola had a haircut this week. He's deep in the pocket, pulls it back and kicks it behind. That's a really disappointing effort from him. He should have kicked that one to the top of the square. Thought that really wasn't a, no, that, no, the, the hip cut's OK. I like the short back and sides. That was just the adrenaline rush in the early part of the game, just feeling the crowd. He's given Collingwood the short back and sides of the last couple of times he's played against him, hasn't he? Look out. No kick. No kick. So he was slow on the whistle there, the umpire. Yeah, so a great the, tackle there by Betts. That's what he does. Against the ex-blue in Brian. No, now Betts, oh, that's a poor kick. It was touched, so Didac's second disposal, Medhurst up the ground. One of the players that Tim and Dennis featured prior to the match. Good kick off the boot. Swan, geez, numbers in the last three weeks have been even more impressive than usual. Didac again, so third disposal for him. Cloak up the ground, goes with a lot of cloak on the end of this, I should say. Now still with him, and then hooking back. It was touched off the boot. It's in the goal square. Ben Johnson is play on. Can't quite get it out. Lock your tackle. Terrific stuff by the Blues. O'Brien, ball up. Touched. Touched off the boot. So read into cloak it was, and terrific contest by Carlton to hold it up. Bounce on the kickoff line then. Came back to cloak. On his knees, Thornton dug it out of there. White, like a basketballer, had a dribble through half-back. Stevens towards midfield. Pitches in front of the leading man coming up the ground. For Bowler did well. Betts inside the forward 50. Low down. Cruiser missed it. Arriving quickly, Murphy locks it up with Whiteland. And the umpire will bounce it down. Umpire number four, Luke Farmer, a rising star, getting a big game this afternoon. And there's the trio, the firm of... Farmer, Schmidt and Kennedy. Schmidt. Opportunity for Shaw. In fact, a couple of them. Reese Shaw kicks it up short of the wing. Carrazzo gets in front, takes the mark, feeds it off. Armfield, Stevens. Well, it's one on two. The one leads back in the race. That's Fisher. Closing is Johnson. Johnson, wonderful balance, at least initially. Then he went down. O'Brien's in there. Love a ball up. And there's a matchup to keep an eye on. Heath Shaw is trying to get to Murphy. Gibbs has been trying to get to Heath Shaw. That will sort itself out in the latter part of this quarter. Gibbs did a really good job last weekend on Chad Corns, and I think they're just sort of teaching him that's next stage of his games. We see Brett Ratton already a little bit agitated about what he's seeing out there on the field. Cloak won the tap, and then uh, did the roving himself. Thomas put the tackle on. So Greg picks himself up. Cloak just put an arm bar on Thomas <laughs> while they were lying on the ground. He's fired up the uh, ex-Magpie with the famous name. Thomas pushes forward Judd. Judd in close, got a hand pass away. Armfield moves nicely. Carrazzo, Thornton, the defensive side of the wing towards half forward. What a well-weighted kick onto the chest of Stevens. Stevens wanting to go to Bola. Well, Favola takes it to the boundary. No margin for error there for the kicker. Favola looks back and has a bit to say, I think, about the kick. Well, the lead was in the wrong place, Bev. No, you're spot on, Dennis. I mean, that's OK to lead there because you're going to drag your direct opponent to it, but the kick should have gone squarer towards the goal. Reshaw and Judd. That, that was the info, Tim, that uh, Ricky got. Was that Reshaw would run with Judd? And then there was a, a thought maybe from the Blues it'll be something different. So he might have the big job. Cloak, interesting year, Cloak. He's had some big matches and he's had two or three droughts. The big one on Anzac Day, speaking of which, Medhurst kicks almost to the forward 50. Scotland playing a couple of grand finals for the Maggies. Picked up by O'Brien to Thomas. Run down, but does get a kick away to the goal square almost. Fraser went to ground. Ball rolling. Won't be a goal. 
And the reason why these Collingwood forwards are so difficult to match up with is that they go and they push really high into the midfield. Here's a great tackle here by Lockyer, uh, sorry, Lockyer on Scotland. Jamison out of the back pocket then. Lick Simpson. Kira. Carlton have started OK. Finding space. Here's Cloak right on the wing. Told to play on. Goes down towards half forward. Fisher. Lively forward like him. Test for O'Brien. Kicks towards full forward. Wakeland does well. He was body to body with Cruiser and timed the moment to leave. Didn't ring, didn't call, just left. I and touched a... it across the line. Sorry, Dennis. I reckon that's the right idea to get in there as quickly as you possibly can before the numbers get back. The kick just went to the wrong side. So Reshaw with a couple of running bounces and then kicks to Aubrey. Aubrey to centre half forward. Chio Halpern was in the front spot. Cloak from 50. Kicks to the pocket. Davis went early and then misjudged it. I reckon the nerves are getting to the players in the early part of this game. There seems to be a lot of adrenaline pumping through their veins at the moment if you watch their performance. They're not doing the measured thing. There's been a number of kicks that have gone into forward lines at either end of the ground that just haven't been to the correct target. And there's another pretty nervy kick coming from the back through Thornton. Wait. She's so much to like about his athleticism. Jamison back in the team today. Had that shoulder problem. Well done, Hampson. On with you, Dennis Armfield, looks likely. Well, gee, Betts was good to Armfield. They're on here if he can deliver. Fisher gave the first. Armfield took a long time. He does deliver. Whew. He did that beautifully, though. The way that he carried the, the ball. And the thing about players who actually run and bounce the ball is most times they don't actually execute the kick as well as what they should. But he finished it off beautifully. And already for bowls looking lively. There's a great shot, Tim, a moment ago when... You saw in the background the scuffling going on between the Collingwood forwards and the defenders behind Fev. Well, Fev looking back now. 50 metres for Favola here. Here's Grigg. And Grigg is actually going with Swan. Both of them interchanged at the same time. And Swan got Grigg a little bit high, almost at the interchange gates. The umpire was able to spot that. And now Favola will finish off with the simplest of goals. We'll talk about high drama at the G. Fev kicks the first. OK, this is what happened at the interchange gates. There's Swan and Grigg just tangling on the ground. There was just the faintest of touches around the neck area, the region of the head. And we know that uh, we've even heard the CEO of the competition say that the head is sacrosanct. On that occasion, the umpire spotted it. And what was going to be a reasonably difficult shot for Favola became the simplest of shots. But there's the finish by Arthur. That's a terrific kick. Margin is seven points. And I think we found a witness, someone who can identify the perps. That's That's right. Thanks, Dennis. Had it right in front of me. What happened is Swan was coming to the interchange bench. Grigg, who's his tag, actually stopped him from getting to the bench, just used a shepherding tactic, and Swan got frustrated that because he couldn't get to the bench and slung him to the ground. That's what gave the free kick away. Snitch. Stevens gets a hand pass out. Schofield goes back. Thornton towards Betts. Betts trying to get separation. We'll get a free kick. Will advantage be paid? Well, Judd would like that one back. It wanders down towards Murphy. Murphy took a fall initially, like a clock in the ocean, springs to his feet, hooks it back, takes a bounce for Carlton, hangs a long time in the air. Maxwell gets back and runs it across the line. That's going to be a fascinating matchup between Murphy and Heath Shaw. Heath Shaw, uh, Heath Shaw has been tagged the last month. The last time these two sides played, Bruce, he was averaging about 29 touches. He's back down to 16, so he hasn't been the prolific player we saw in the early part of the year. Penderbury started on the interchange. High tackle surely on Simpson. And Tim Thomas, the number two, and Murphy, the number one from the same draft, both out there today. They're you just wonder whether that's been two. mentioned in the lead up to this game, don't you? Yep. They've both been very good, haven't they, in their first few seasons? Reed with a long one. He got it from Medhurst. Cloak's got a couple to beat. He goes to ground. So Reed. Getting a bit of it early, he only had five disposals in his other match this year. The only other time he played was on the Saturday night when the Kangaroos upset Collingwood. Cloak keen to get on to Gibbs. The little give to Scotland. Good-looking kick. 
Oh. This is exactly what he did to them last time. And he beat the defenders on the long lead. He's so quick out of the goal square. Too fast for Harry O'Brien last time. Already he's been too quick for Nathan Brown. But this is wonderful disposal here from Heath Scotland on his non-preferred kick by foot, which is his left foot. Beautifully weighted kick. Well, he's kicked seven, six and four going backwards the last three times he's played against Collingwood. 17 in his last three. He's got the first goal today. That's not going to come back. So one goal, two to Favola in this opening term. And what uh, the Blues have been doing well at the other end of the ground too is Collingwood are trying to drag them all over the place with their forward line. They're actually trying to keep a little bit of structure. So when it has gone in there, they've been out, uh, able to outnumber Collingwood. O'Brien inside the defensive 50 then goes towards the outer side and Johnson fisted away from behind and out of bounds. Well done, Thornton. Interesting duel too. Dennis Armfield, the young man from Swan Districts in Western Australia, on Leon Davis, originally from Perth as well, the Perth Footy Club, on each other. Davis hasn't had a possession. Armfield more than any other player out there at the moment with four. Cloak goes after the ball, hand passes towards the 50. Schofield worked off the line. Bentick did well. Fisher on the assist, taken by Murphy, stabs it inside the forward 50, and Pabola juggles it. Well, that time he beat Harry O'Brien, and I don't know whether or not uh, there was just a little bit of chaos there as the ball came forward, or O'Brien is actually now, well, it looks like O'Brien has now gone to Favola after those two easy marks by Favola on the lead. That was the matchup last time that really bothered Mick Malthouse, though they just couldn't get it right all afternoon. Should kick this one. Two goals last week. Seven back in round four for the second time against the Magpies. And he's made a very good start this afternoon. They're coming for Collingwood at the moment. Love the way they're kicking the ball into the 50 to fall. Another beautiful kick by Murphy, just the weight. And the other part about that, though, too, Bruce, is they're actually able to win the scrimmages at the moment. They've been able to move the ball from the stoppages. They've got a really handy bunch of midfield players there. As we see, Bentick actually picked the ball up off the ground, and that was Murphy who targeted the ball inside there. But that matchup they couldn't get right last time. I mean, Harry O'Brien is a very good player, but Favola just seems to think that he's got the edge on him. So, Fev, four shots for goal. He's as confident at the moment playing on Harry O'Brien as he would against any defender in the competition. So, big start now for Carlton. Winning the clearances. Bentick kicks forward. Fisher, Brown now on him. He started forward, as Tim told us, the last time. He kicked a couple of goals. Here's Davis. That's his first disposal to Wellingham, who's been very impressive in the five games he's played so far. Johnson, Cloak, that's a good stretch. They've had just three handballs so far, Collingwood, so they haven't been able to get any run whatsoever in their game. And those forwards, despite how brilliant they are, they've had most of their possessions up the field. Burns, that's a dangerous kick, it's a goal! Very dangerous indeed! Well done, Dida. He is an outstanding player, Burns. Started on the bench today, but when he comes on, he injects real life into their midfield. He's an inside player. Last Monday, we saw him perform at the absolute best. He was the number one player on the ground. This is a long kick. Smart play here by Didac, too. But in the early part of this game, the Collingwood players, Didac, Thomas, Smethurst, they have been pushing up really high in the ground. They've been getting most of their possessions across the midfield, and they've had very little inside their attacking 50. The evergreen Scott Burns made his debut against Carlton round one, 1995. His first opponent was Craig Bradley. Carlton won by 29 points. Matt Clappe, there's a name, kicked three goals. 87,000 watched it. We're in that territory this afternoon. Knocked down by Clark Murphy, Bentick. Scotland's away. Davis is coming hard, not in time. Scotland in front of the leading man, Cruiser. Got the hand pass away for Bowler. Goes after it, had the initial soccer. There his legs under there, Pavola, belly up. He made the early error, the umpire's correct, he dived on the ball, he, he should have hit it out right there, he should have kept the ball alive rather than dragging it in under himself and uh, he was in all sorts of trouble, the umpire adjudicating correctly. Talking about Burns, biggest crowd between these two clubs for a home and away game on his debut. Just in excess of those 87,000 I was talking about.
Ten minutes to go in the term. Carlton getting the fast start. Now Collingwood starting to settle. Shades of that first game. But they never got all the way back. Fraser. Medhurst under pressure. Russell. Christian took him down. Holding the ball. Easy. Thank you. He doesn't get caught too often, Medhurst, does he? Not in the black and white. Gee, Russell was like a terrier dog on him, wasn't he? Like a Jack Russell. As he kicks the fall forward, Fev went too early. And the number five, gee, you reckon Nick Maxwell would have been stirred this week with everything with Buckley wearing his jumper, wouldn't you? Yep. I mean, it's been Buck's week so much. Well, one of the other major discussions during the week has been blockbuster fatigue as well, Bruce. I think the Blues are enjoying the occasion more than Collingwood at the moment. Don't mind these adre adrenaline rushes when you come here with 80,000. I wouldn't be complaining about it. Shaw, Scotland, Judd, Lockyer. Well, Carlton well, now has the matchup the that they wanted. Thanks, Heath. They've got Heath Shaw, or Gibbs has now gone to Heath Shaw. Now, Gibbs' job is to stop Heath Shaw from running out and to present himself to the ball when Carlton control it. Knocked out of there. Only as far as Reese Shaw. Fraser, not the best hand pass. Thomas did well. Fraser, Lockyer involved earlier, gets the kick. Beyond this centre line, terrific Mark Medhurst wants to go, does. Kicks inside the forward 50. Working in front down there was Cloak. Had it punched away by O'Halpin. Close to the boundary line, under desperate trouble. Falling to the ground. That man, Greg, could do nothing except hand pass further away. And luckily for him, it went out of bounds. So a boundary throw in. Yes, they've coined the phrase this week. Lockbuster fatigue. It's actually a syndrome now, I think. So we've got BFS. Interesting, it does include the initials BS. We've got a bounce midway between wing and half forward. Nice to the ball. Griggs back to Swan again. He'll wear him throughout the afternoon. So Thornton against the flow. Carazzo. So they just set up here. The Blues. Wiggins. Simpson. Back to wait. Well done. Creating something there out of not a whole lot. Now Simpson's a hard runner and a long kick. He's going to go to the goal square. Gibbs getting back. Wow. Davis couldn't quite accelerate onto the footy. Favola could. Look away, Hamble didn't go far. Lockyer, Gibbs, Bentick. Good struggle. They're terrific at the moment, Carlton. Here's the look away <laughs> throw. Gee, didn't, didn't Steve Johnson start something a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> Almost had a hairy. It's knocked down. Taken by Thomas. Awkward bounce for Burns, arriving quickly, Murphy, he started brilliantly, over the shoulder. Lockyer though, getting a bit of it now, kicks it just short of the wing, Cloak getting a hard time, waiting behind Thornton to Cloak. Now Cloak kicks inside the forward 50, what a beautiful kick, and some wonderful strength by Favola. A battle of strength with O'Brien, and he got that separation over the last five metres, watch this again. Just what this bit here. It was just okay. I know exactly where you are. I'm going to hold you. It's a beautifully weighted kick. I do that. I can run and take an easy chest mark. And doesn't he look super confident today, Brendan Favola? I reckon you go out there, you look at your direct opponent, and you think, okay, there's nothing here that can stop me. And that's where he's at mentally right now. Can you come back from that if you're the opponent? Can you make yourself look like somebody else? Here's Favola, 52 metres out. Gives it a ride, just off target of behind. And he could have easily kicked four in this opening term. Two goals, three. Alan Bond's been able to do that, Dennis. <laughs> he has. Go away and get a Schwarzenegger mask. Some good lateral thinking in the box today. O'Brien. Johnson it was a good handball because he's on his left side. Floating kick eluded Hampson. It's been busy, Medhurst. Not everything he's done, those turned to gold yet. Didac, Carazzo, Medhurst. She Medhurst was good there, and Didac was brilliant to Davis, who slipped as he kicked inside. Reed, 
Might have just been held onto for a moment. Wiggins' handball well weighted. Oh, Halpin. Steady. Well done. Stevens. Can they set up here, Carlton? Favola's off now. He goes shorter. Mac, I reckon they've got the wrong setup at the moment, Collingwood. They've got the two tools inside the attacking 50. I reckon they need to make sure that one of their dangerous ground level players are in there as well. Willingham did very well. They're under the pump. Pendlebury back to O'Brien and the big H is away. Drives it around the outer side. Set up for Reed. Finds it on the ground as Reed. Lays it off. O'Brien. Little chip. Just outside the 50. Sliding in. Cloak missed it. O'Halpin got the crumb. He slung. And he's got to get the free kick. The first part of the tackle was good, not the second. O'Halpin lays it off. Carazzo up from the back pocket. Spots a man in midfield. I think he wanted to go to Simpson, then called the jam off. Oh, Halpin's got it now. Delicate. Murphy, not 15. Murphy kicks inside the forward 50. And again, Favola's taken the mark. And Michael Malthouse going to change this and change it quickly. Fair slow to get up. Well, they've been to plan A, which was Nathan Brown. They've been to plan B now, which is Harry O'Brien. He's taken five marks inside 50. And he's just getting too much flow. I mean, there's two ways of looking at it. You try and stop the flow up the ground, so your midfield has to get on top and pressure Carlton's kicks. At the moment, they're getting far too much easy footy up the ground, and they're able to pinpoint those kicks when they go into attack. Maybe, I don't know who actually plan B, uh, C is, by the way. I mean, there's Shane Waitland's down there, but uh, I don't think he's going to be suited to Brendan Favola either. No plan C. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> Favola, 55 metres out, gets right under this one and misses off to the right. It's a behind. He's kicked, two, he's kicked two goals for Favola. Yes, but his kicks uh, have been from so far out and on the angle too. Now, if he can actually start taking the ball in that radius of about 40 metres out from... Oh, Murphy's cut it off, Tim. Sorry to cut you off. Has he scored it? No, I think he's missed. Gee, Carlton are letting them off the hook here big time, aren't they? And you know that Collingwood will come again. So nine scoring shots to three. Fence had six of those nine. And remember, he got a 50-metre penalty when he was outside the 50 for Vola. That was one of his goals. I think he's got to just sit back deeper in the goal square and just wait a bit longer. If he can take those marks inside about 40, he's not going to have to put the hook on the kick like he's trying to at the moment to get that extra distance. Reece Shaw goes with a long bomb. Jamison, good handball. Fisher up the ground. Inside. The Scotland two. to Fisher. Oh. Did he run out? He did with the footy. It was a shame there that Jamison didn't look up and Scotland didn't look up either because they'd actually orchestrated the player in the midfield. It was Russell who was all alone. He's such a good kick, Murphy. I mean, that was a big miss, wasn't it? Look at Ratney. Can't believe it. That's a coach that's riding every bump and every kick. Probably the biggest match he's ever coached in, you'd reckon, wouldn't you? Just so. about. I can't think of any bigger. No. Win today and they're in the eight. What a reward. Past halfway. Here's Stevens under pressure. Just jams it on the boot. Murphy, keen to make amends, does well. She's a good player. Kicks inside the forward 50. For Bowler battling down there with Brown. Brown's gone back onto him, at least for the moment. Working behind his Wakeland. Plan B, perhaps. The ball now with O'Brien comes away. Here's a chance for the Magpies. Pendlebury having a couple of bounces around the outer side wing. No one coming to him, though. They're making it hard for him. Chips across the ground. Eventually, a belated lead came from Medhurst. He's about 65 metres from goal. Sets it up very high. Why not go to Didak? Didak almost. Carazzo was there. Crashing in. A chance for Pendlebury. Well done, Didak. Kept it alive. Reed goes with a check side and misses... Just about everything are behind. Three minutes to get a quarter time. Margin is 10 points. Anthony Rocker, who's going to talk with us at half time today, looking down. Would have been lovely if Reed had given it to Didak then, with Didak going for goal like that. Their forward line looked better than when they approached, though, because they had a couple of smalls inside their attacking 50, and it wasn't just Reed and Cloak, the targets. Gee, Stevens thought that out well. He knew that our Halpman was at the back, but he knew he had to kick it to himself to get that extra distance. And now Simpson, now he's a lefty. Didak running after him, but he's well shepherded. And then Simpson to full forward. Gibbs going forward, can't quite. Maxwell was going to toe poke, then decided to pick it up. Might have been a bad decision in the end. 
And that's really smart play there by Thank Gibbs. You. He's an intelligent footballer. He's picking up Heath Shaw. So he's actually playing the defensive job. He's taking Heath Shaw right to the goal square and then providing the target. Now, if they start kicking to him, then Heath Shaw can't at any stage let him go and sag off and just try and be that extra player. And Heath Shaw, one disposal, Tim. He gave it just 22, but in the last three weeks, down to 16. And... Uh... They've been able to, uh, the opposition have been able to just get a bit of a handle on him by some close checking. Advantage. The advantage oh, paid here, and they're not going to use it here, I don't think, although Murphy's in the pocket. But they just got fumbly there under pressure, Carlton. They, they just haven't made enough of the control of the game that they've had in this first quarter, Carlton. They're spanking the pies all over the ground, but they just haven't been able to hurt them enough on the scoreboard. Nine shots to four, but they're only ten points in front. Hampson trying to direct it down to Judd. In front of him, Reece Shaw somehow Judd emerges with a football push as he kicked. It bounces towards full forward. Getting to his feet, O'Brien. Pendlebury out of defence. Good kick, drives it to a one-on-one. -on -one. Carrazzo working double time on the genius of Didac, but that time he was content with the result. Got it out of bounds. Carrazzo's picking up Didac. Now there's a little bit of uh, Claret just dribbling down the cheek Fisa, Fisa. of... Fisher. Fisher there. Umpire hasn't spotted it yet. Trying to get through the pack there was Russell. Lost at O'Brien. Reese Shaw, Pendlebury. Started on the bench. A little chip took something off the kick. Well done by Swan. Knocked it to his own advantage. Kicks inside the forward 50. Can they tighten up the scores here? Collingwood in the last minutes of the term. Jamison did brilliantly. Got it back to O'Halpin. Comes across the ground. This youngster started so well. And so far, he's blanketed Davis. Armfield drives it towards the wing. Not getting the fist forward was Maxwell. That was a mistake. Running onto it, a tired Stevens hasn't got the football. Or play on's the call. Maxwell to O'Brien. And now Brian. Normally a long kick. That one, he shanked a bit out wide. Swan in the front spot with Grigg. Well done, Thornton, to hold him up. Still Thornton, Didak lurking dangerously. Still with Didak. Inside, a beauty to cloak. They are the smartest feet in the game, aren't they? Yep. And there is Fisher. He was always dangerous here, wasn't he? Well, there's his first bit of footwork. Just kicking it to himself. And that wasn't an easy kick at all but he just spotted the space there in front and that was just beautifully weighted again to cloak well, you'd love them delivered to you like that if you're a forward just a telling moment in the game i reckon here tim after the favola misses now cloak we know that he was inaccurate in his first couple of seasons in front of goal from set shots but this year he's just kicking at 70 percent 16 7 from set shots he's been very good this would be a telling blow for collingwood Oh, and he's, look at that post banging away there. Hitting it a long way up. Scotland. It's been a good first quarter, hasn't it? Terrific. Huge crowd, great atmosphere. Feels like a final. And Scotland going long and a huge fly from Wiggins who caught the high, hard one. And he's down on quarter time. It settles down now. In the first quarter, it's been way down again. Start of the second term of the G. Chris Judd not in the centre square. In fact, I don't think he's on the ground at the moment. O'Brien, Grigg, hurried kick towards half forward. Bounces inside the 50. Murphy had it for a moment. They're in desperate trouble. Wiggins, Schofield, or rather Scotland. Now Bentick, chopped off by Swan. Kicks towards half forward. Not a good kick. Cloak couldn't control it. Carrazzo wanted a free clock, came again. Well done, oh. Brian. Brilliant. After Johnson. 60 metres from goal. Reed is the target. It runs on. It'll pull up alongside the goal square. Plenty of time and numbers favour Carlton. Greg got it from White. May go back to White. Does a 360. Interesting. Kicks it shy of the wing. Jamison had a bounce off his chest. Medhurst. Jamison's got him, took him down. Ball Boy, up. No and again, they're able to stop Collingwood. There's Chris Judd just uh, 
Looks like he's checking his pulse there. He might just be having a bit of a scratch instead. So Cloak doing the ruck work. Simpson held up by Pendlebury with O'Brien. Scotland's handball. Carato did really well there. He had nowhere to go and he was able to back turn to give himself some space. And then Waits kick gave Russell a bit of a job to do. And now Didak and O'Brien. O'Brien arched the back once and he just dropped the footy. Tackling's been wonderful. Right. Bentig on the end of the handball. Where's Fev? Well, he's shoving and pushing them out of the way. That's where he is. Clark. She did well there, oh. Murphy. What a contest. Obrey traps it back. Well done, Burns. Clark. Obrey look away. Terrific. Johnson on the burst. And well done, Collingwood. Reed gives it back to Johnson. Johnson, 70 metres out, goes looking for the leading player, the target provided by Thomas. That pressure, that contest at centre half forward at Carlton's end was just fabulous. Collingwood just getting enough numbers there for Bowler again, just pushing Brown out of the way. This is what I'd like to see at the other end of the ground there. Mick just going off. He's not happy with what he's seen, but he would have been happier about this. Thomas just doubled back to the goal square, took Armfell with him, and then made his lead from there. And having said that about the pressure, what about the reflexes of Mark Murphy? The man in front fumbled. He took the ball on the full. He could play wee blindfolded. Thomas comes in and gets the goal. Important. They don't deserve to be this close, but they are because they've taken the most of their opportunities. And Thomas, an area of his game that he's really improved is he set shot for goal. Bruce, at the moment, he's kicking at 81% plus. And I really thought that in the first quarter, Collingwood weren't able to get their forward line structure right. Often when the ball went in, they only had the two tall targets in Reed and Cloak operating. Both of those players were being stopped. This looks better. Tim, interesting situation. Judd off the ground. Reese Shaw is off the ground. Reese Shaw in terms of possession, 7-3. to three. So they're trying to shake that tag up, Carlton, with no success at the moment. He's going everywhere with Judd. Rolling the dice, leaving Judd off the ground with Collingwood coming at you, aren't you? Yep. So Simpson to Murphy. Back to Carazzo. Stevens to set up, had a lot of the footy in the first quarter. That's a good long kick, but Clark was good enough to just get in front of Scotland. Mm. Off Didak's boot there over the boundary line on the full. The well full. picked up the by full. the boundary line. Back here, back here, back here. Mark is here. Scotland coming in hard and Clark oh. keeping his eyes on it. Scotland just copping one in the head. Kick to the 50. Right, so for a kick against Brown. And that's just because you're too worried about your direct opponent. Clearly a free kick then to Vival. But once again, he's right on the 50. And as we've seen already, in trying to get that extra distance, he's gone the hook. This is a really difficult shot. He can go the distance. But on what we've seen today, he's been giving the ball too much elevation. Let's just see whether or not he can kick cleaner through the ball. At his best, you'd back him from here, wouldn't you? You'd reckon he'll goal. Holding the line, not going to be a goal. Big fly came in from Cloak, and he's disappointed that he didn't hang on to it. So Favola's had a lot of shots. If I was to tell you that Brendan Favola had nine kicks and it wasn't even half time, you'd probably put him down for four or five goals. Absolutely. A bit like Buddy Franklin, Tim. What do you have? 21 last night and kicked one. That's right, Favola, right two, there. four. Little one by Swan. Now Brown coming off Favola. Brown from the wing then, drives it down towards the attacking 50. Carrazzo slid in, controlled it. Lock. Tackle here! Lock, you're diving over the top. Has been taken high. 60 metres out. Spots Pendlebury running down towards the pocket. Tight angle, Pendlebury misses to the near side. Never had it on line. Carrazzo's became... A really good player too. Uh, he's probably snuck up on us. He came into the competition. He was a prolific midfielder. Now they've been able to play him as one of their small backs. At different stages this afternoon, he's had Didat to contend with. Now he's on Lockyer. I mean, it's a really good defensive player that can pick up those sorts of players, stop them and still get hold of the footy. Carlton lead it by three points. Scotland to Carrazzo. Still well inside the defensive 50. Seven possessions for Carazzo so far. Now it's eight. I was just about to say, I think his kicking's improved too. Under the chest of Russell. 
Bentick on the overlap. Probing kick towards the attacking 50. Great judgment by the veteran. Wakeland goes back, takes the mark short. To another experienced campaigner, Burns. Pendlebury, who came on and had an influence after starting on the bench. Hand passes to O'Brien, a bit shell-shocked. This kick not bad, though, across the ground. Taken by Josh Fraser. Reed on a searching lead. Great speed, great acceleration. And he's going to get a free kick. Well, he just got away from White. They started side by side. And whoosh. The kick not great. He had to wait. And that gave White a chance. I know it's very confusing, but Reed's got the football. And he'll kick from on the 50. He's a left footer. So the angle will open up. Thought about it. Decides not to go. Watching him before the game, he's got a pretty accurate kick. Wow. Then he comes. If he kicks this, routines will change around the world. Falls in front. Opportunity down there for Armfield. In desperate trouble, trying to get boot to ball. Forced out of there by Carazzo. Thomas kicks it right across the face of goal and advances out of bounds in the opposite pocket. Well, this is actually called the Scotty Welsh Shuffle. Have a look at this. Gee. Mm. Swan couldn't quite. Grigg running hard. They need a goal, Carlton. Collingwood just starting to get some control in this match. Betts, who was very good very early, scrambles it inside the 50 for Vola. Strong. Gets another free kick. Just strength. Just watch this again. There it is. Just the push at the right time by Favola. He is supremely confident. He's just a bloke out there at the moment who knows that neither of those blokes are good enough to play with him man on man. I wonder if he's supremely confident kicking for goal. That's the only thing. This is his eighth shot in this match. Almost on the same yep. line too. Get a terrific view. You'd think this suits the right foot a little bit more, though he has a bit of a unique style and he's not going to bring that back. So he's kicked two goals, five, with one rush from another shot. It's getting costly, isn't it? Yep, coming into this game, he was at about 50%. 62% set shots, but he kicked 42-21. Because you just feel there's a ceiling to how many times he can get the footy at the 50. Crowd very unhappy, but clearly a free kick. Pendlebury goes short. Josh Fraser in two minds. Back to Pendlebury. This is Burns at the interchange gates. Searching kick. Lockyer favoured by the kickers going back. Carazzo got a hand to it. Crowd won a free kick and they might get one. Lockyer. I don't know how the crowd want one. The Collingwood supporters in the crowd, who are in the majority, wanted one. This is the Monghouse paddock too. We've heard the Dennis Pagan paddock, the Pagan paddock that was employed all those years ago when Wayne Carey was the dominant player in the competition. But we see more and more on a week-to-week -week basis now Collingwood just pushing their numbers up the ground and then just kicking to that paddock and their smaller players working in that space that they create behind the actual contest itself. They do it so well. I reckon they discovered it by accident the night they played Geelong though. By accident? Mick won't like that. Target Lockyer, 13 goals for the season, including his fabulous reclining goal last week. This is more conservative, but he puts it through. Collingwood in front. Excellent may not have been the right word, Dennis. It might have been that they weren't quite sure that it was going to be as successful on a week-to-week -week basis. It was a tactic they used against Geelong to try and nullify Geelong and actually stack the players in the midfield to stop Geelong's run in the centre of the ground. But it was so effective for them that night, and it worked so well, the players were disciplined about it. But now they use it on a week-to-week -week basis. In the last month, they've been averaging 20 goals a game. Maggie's in front, down to you, Rick. Well, Simon Wiggins copped a heavy knock in the, just before quarter time. He came to the bench complaining of blurred vision. He was checked by the doctor, who's given the all clear. He's now gone back onto half forward. Carlton has not kicked a goal for 26 minutes. If they get one now, they hit the front again. But Collingwood making the running now. Ben Johnson, slippery little patch there. 
Fraser did well. Methurst got the high one. Hamble not good. Johnson had to go searching for it. Reshaw bursting through. Still going Reshaw. And then loading up. It won't be a goal, but it might be in a moment. Pendlebury had a lot of it in Scotland. Did very well in the end when he got a second sniff, didn't he? What do you reckon was going through Chris Judd's mind when he saw Heeshaw just dashing out of the centre there? I reckon he was thinking, I wish it was me with the footy right now. Chewy on your boot, eh? Shaw important early, isn't he? Doing a great Good job point. on Judd. Well, he's doing a great job both ways. Those uh, few possessions Judd had, or has had, have been rushed ones as well. Murphy. Still Murphy. Little chip pass. Stevens and Medhurst. Medhurst has been terrific. To Wellingham. It wasn't a very good kick by Murphy, actually. And then Wellingham under pressure out on the four. He's played five games, Wellingham. He's got a perfect record. Collingwood's won every match that he's played in in the short career to date. He's five for five. And he's standing on the mark right now. This youngster caught the eye. Dennis Armfield. So much for that. O'Brien gets through. Collingwood looking dangerous now. Medhurst fed back to him. Came from Reed. Medhurst under pressure. That pressure affected the kick. Johnson confronted by Stevens. Back to Reed. Kicks inside the forward 50. Oh, help and got high. Punched away from behind though by Carazzo. Now a chance again for Lockyer. Lays it off. Johnson went down and found it. Couldn't get through. So much for that builder beast. Disguise. Shaw again, terrific, crash the pack in the opposite direction, Armfield, gave it to Judd, Judd's hand pass, good to Murphy, Murphy, 12 possessions now, and the 12th a good one, onto the chest of Fisher, Murphy, Judd is down, but he's picking up the slack, towards the attacking 50, great defence down there by Brown, stolen by Betts, goes back towards Wiggins, thought about a hand pass, now he goes, opportunity for the defender, Thornton, and he's kicked a goal! In the thick of the action there, but Carlton, they just keep getting the numbers to the contest. That was That's what it was all about. There was pressure all over the ground. There's Betts just releasing the ball in the forward line. That's all you need to do when you're in your attacking half is just release it and just hope that the cavalry arrive, and they did in the form of Thornton. So Blue then after the goal by Thornton. He's a bit excited, Thornton. Fev coming in and then Didak coming in. And then Fev and Didak, two of the colourful personalities in the AFL. Thornton's second goal only in his career. The last time, the only time, was in the middle of the 2003 season. It was a long time ago. He likes to space him out. Simpson did well. Stevens crashing and then throwing it away. Look at him. Collingwood given the advantage. Lockyer, well-weighted kick. Their foot skills have been better than Carlton's. Here's Swan, short to Thomas. That wasn't such a great kick. And then Greg to Jamison. Simpson's on. Carlton to Bill. Judd. Big cheer. I wonder if he was back. nervous today, Judd. Gets it back. Takes them on, gets to 50, goes to Fev. Well done by Brown, and now Harry's away. It's pulsating stuff. Davis, a one, one bouncer, carries it up to the 50. Well, it's a three bouncer now, this run. He drives it beyond the wing, and a good kick to Pendlebury. Stood his ground, strong mark. End to end stuff. Low scoring, Carlton by three points. Pendlebury into the bright sunshine now, and Reed. Looks to the middle. Now he kicks down towards the pocket. Armfield edged forward there by Thomas. And the ball goes out of bounds. Swan claiming a free kick, nothing doing. Now this is Chris Judd in full flight. Here he is in the centre of the ground. This is where he's dangerous. Hits the target, follows up, gets the ball back again. He actually kicked this beautifully, but Favola misread it. He was waiting and waiting, whereas Judd actually was trying to orchestrate where he wanted him to run to. Swan hurriedly out of the congestion after the boundary throw-in. And it's going to be a free kick to Thomas. I think for a push in the back. 
So Thomas, 20 metres out, a chance to regain the lead for the Magpies. Two. And the umpire's not afraid Just wait. to pay free kicks close to goal this afternoon. Right. Set shots Do for this again. man. 8 1 yeah. this season. Well, I think on the 13th earlier today at Torrey Pines, we saw Tiger Woods sink a putt this long. Not sure what that proves. Just an interesting little story, Dennis, that's all. Something to muse over on a Sunday afternoon. Got me fascinated. Carazzo <laughs> called to play on. So, Collingwood, that's a big miss by Thomas, as Dennis said. 8-1 from set shots, including the one earlier today. Well done, terrific, Mark. He's improving this game, isn't he? Already today, he's done a pretty good job on cloak. No help, and the Irishman kicking into the centre. Good kick, too. I like this guy, Wiggins. Nicely weighted kick. Maxwell went early. Russell kept his feet. Simpson's a left footer. He can go the long bomb. He's 50 out. Arches to the back. Kicks to the goal square. Bits at the back. Something's happened. It's a Collingwood free kick. Hands in the back. Wow, wow. And O'Brien's off. Gee. So Wakeland getting the advantage. Nowhere to go here. Absolutely nowhere to go, and the umpires decided to call it back. No advantage at all. He had to come up the centre here. There's the push. It was interesting how Wakeland was able to change the umpire's mind. He almost said, look, I don't really want the footy, eh? Exactly. Yeah, he, he, oh, it's he, a special day for him. It's his 150th for the club, yeah. He gets special consideration on a day like that. Wellingham to Reid. Oh, Bree's got it now. Wellingham at arm's length, taken down. And he's going nowhere. Thornton pleads the case vigorously. Umpire Farmer comes in. Unmoved. That was interesting. Wakeland realised no options up the wing, so didn't want the advantage. Umpire's now got to read the game. Ben takes over the football. Another ball up. 25-27. Seven and a half minutes out from halftime. Michael Malthouse. Game number 750. Official games, that is. Game number 575 as a coach. Only two men have coached in more. That first total played and coached. And there was Johnson. Gibbs in desperate trouble. Just went back, did a U-turn. Not to be advised. Didac battles after the football, at least initially, and they tie it up at the base of the pack. There is Gibbs. Russell in there as well. Bentick. Well represented in that pack, Carlton. Judd's taken. Reshaw right up the other end of the ground. He's going to play him out the goal square as a full four to second league in target behind Favola. Bounce. That looks dangerous. About 60 metres out. Gibbs had it knocked away by O'Brien. Taken by Stevens in the grasp. Hand passes to a voice. Anyone's voice would have done. Carazzo falling to the ground. Gave it to Thornton. Back to Stevens. Spotted the shadow of Swan chasing. And used it to his advantage. Oh. Fumbled there by Fisher on the lead. It's out of bounds. Stevens was terrific there, wasn't he? He, he was able to change direction. As Dennis said, he had that, that feel. He was able to feel Swan coming at him. It was hard work to get the ball out of there, though. That's the difference now. Collingwood are applying enormous pressure all over the ground. We've got a great contest. O'Brien just dropped down. Stevens got it from Bentick. Keeps the kick low to Judd. Judd and Shaw. And now Betts. Still with Betts, Clark corrals him, Betts kept it in, but oh. to the disadvantage. Shaw, very well done to Maxwell, to Johnson. Johnson will use Shaw again, who's playing some sort of a game. Running hard, not a great kick. Taking off quickly was Thorns and should get something for that. No, now he does. Bentick's on short here. Burns comes off the interchange to try and hold him up, and he does. Bentick. Another little short one. Gwell weighted kick. Wiggins working hard at about 60 metres from goal. You just wonder about the timing of players coming off the ground, don't you, when you watch modern day football? Saw that on Friday night too. A couple of times where players just took off at the wrong time, left their opponent just free. The bowler almost after the Wiggins kick is Judd. Seventh possession deep in the pocket, and he's put it out of bounds on the fall. And Favola indicating it should have come to him. So just for the moment, Chris Judd 
He's got plenty to think about. Reshaw has been terrific. This is Reed working his way into the game too. Towards the boundary. Medhurst can't control it. It was most unlike Chris Judd to do that, but you just wonder whether or not the uh, close attention, as we see some more close attention there, uh, is getting to him from Reshaw. I mean, it was like, OK, I really want to kick myself a big goal and get myself into the game by just twisting one around the corner. The wrong option, though. Club to wait. I don't think there's any doubt. Judd's feeling the pressure. Wait kicks inside the forward 50. Off hands. And across the line for a minor score. Carlton increased their lead. It's back to three. Reshaw doing it all to himself. Demanding Judd work. Judd nowhere to be seen that time. Well, there he is in the foreground. Tracking it out towards halfback. Maxwell. Untidy kick. Brilliantly picked up by Swan. Back to Maxwell. Swan's got it now. Comes to Johnson. And Johnson midway between the lines, half back and centre wing, drives it towards half forward. Cloak had a problem with his son initially, can't keep it in. Boundary throw in. Tight game, just six goals so far in this intriguing first half. Brian and Cloak, they started their Chris careers Brian. playing for the opposite the jumpers. Please. Chris Brian. Cloak a magpie, Brian a blue. Here is Brian getting that free kick. And look at that long bomb. Where's Thomas? He's there. Wait, got a fist. Oh, helping. Quick tackle. Pendlebury. Still Pendlebury. Thomas. Still with Thomas. But he gave it away. And then Midhurst sort of left it. And the Blues force it out. And that's great pressure again by the Carlton backs. There's a good release handball. But just... Oh, he just got lost there. He just lost the ball. Halfway between a kick and a handball, Thomas, wasn't he? Good play. Russell, Stevens wanted a high tackle. He ducked, he's in trouble. Oh. And you do wonder the pressure on an umpire when the ball's 15 metres out compared with 75 out when something like that happens. And I think the umps have done a terrific job helping this game along this afternoon. When we've looked at most of the free kicks and replay, they've been there. Stevens backhands it down to Russell. Wiggins in trouble. O'Bree somehow yeah. stole it away. Oh. The ball up. I mentioned it before, umpire Farmer getting a big game. Young West Australian. This is where we want the third man up just to clear this. He bounces it. Maybe an umpire on the rise. Russell. <laughs> Wrestle down. Another bounce. The old rivals going at it this afternoon. Not giving a centimetre. Goals as a backdrop. Dangerous. Oh, down oh, goes Swan. He's going to get the free kick. Dane, Dane. Had the ball. Kick, Dane. Oh, oh, in the square, too. Was he in the square? It's in the square. No, it's not up. Well, no, Greg can't believe it. I think he's asking if Swan is on the Wetlands Protection oh, Program. But Swan's got the ball five metres out, and that kick, I think, was there, too. And he comes, he walks in, and he kicks it. Well, Greg's done a pretty good job on Swan. He's had just nine touches, but that one hurts. Enormous crowd around this stoppage in the forward line. Collingwood had been unable to actually get a scoring opportunity. Just tempers getting a little bit frayed out there at the moment. There's been a lot of agitation between the two groups of players. Don't go high. Nothing serious in all that. This is nonsense. Dane Swan's goal from the square puts the Magpies back in front. Against you, Paul. Well, there was that scuffle going on after the goal, wasn't there? And eventually Carlton get a free kick. Oh. You know why? So the handball missing the target. Murphy gets a second chance. Goes back to Cloak. And Cloak goes long for Vola. Just worked underneath of it cleverly. Wiggins, well done, Maxwell. Only as far as Simpson, he's on his wrong side. O'Brien, gee, they did that well, Collingwood. It might have been fortunate, but it was brilliant. Burns to Davis. Ball coming out of Carlton's attack a lot easier than it's coming out at the other end, isn't it, at the moment? Davis hooking back inside to Medhurst and gets him. That was a marvellous kick. There were three extra Carlton defenders back there. It just needed a touch of brilliance and an execution like that for them to keep the ball in their hands. Well done. It's not absolutely beyond Medhurst here, but he's gone on shorter Jumper. and a free kick to Swan. Jumper. You can't do that. You gave up front position. 
Well, you heard it all there. Mark's here. He's very good above his head, though, too. A swan, I think this was a really bollard uh, Carazzo as he saw the ball coming in there. He was in, the, he was in position B. Swan was in position A. And uh, just as he tried to get a bit of a lift, he took some jumper. And this one not going to be a goal. He was limp back on it, didn't he? And uh, it's a poor kick. A big miss, actually. That would have been a deadly blow late in a low-scoring half that Carlton has been in front for more than 50% of the time. They're not clearly on top at the moment, Collingwood, and, uh, I mean, nor does the scoreboard suggest that, but I think your point's really good. They're actually bringing the ball out of their defensive part of the ground a lot smoother and a lot easier than what Carlton is. Oh, Halpin looking for Judd. He's outnumbered, battling with Davis there. Now, he needs to be careful, Chris Judd. Heard the explanation. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Leon Dragon as well. So here's the bounce. About 40 minutes out from goal. Collingwood's attacking goal. Slapped towards the middle by Fraser. Bentick, was he pushed in the back? Oh, we'll get a free kick. kick. Adam Bentick. Right it's funny kick. because I think the umpires will be the subject of some discussion after this first half, but as we've said, they're doing a pretty good job. Stop. Moving on. Play on now. Play on. Bentick told to play on then. Deep at his own defensive right. 50. Well, that's a terrible kick as it turns out. Almost as if designed to go to Medhurst. Medhurst, wonderful. A sleight of hand. And then he boots it through for a goal. Magic. Well, two things there. Jamison. I don't know what he was thinking at the time because he had to go for the ball. It was as though he decided very early that the ball wasn't for him, it was for Stevens. And then Stevens here, that was just a poor attempt at gaining possession of the ball. Now he had to actually body the ball and take Medhurst and the ball with him. Just watch this angle. You can't just run wide of the ball like Stevens did on that occasion. That was just poor play. Had lots of disposals in the first half, none better than that. There's Nathan Buckley, and with him, Jet and his father on his left, Ray Buckley, Tanya and his wife, a couple away. And a huge week, as we said, for the Buckley family this week. A tribute week, lap of honour before the game. Step it out, your ball, Matthew. No, you're coming over this side, Josh. Hey! So it's actually. A free kick against Fraser, and then Judd banging it back in for Vol. It's just gone off the boil a bit. Locker getting back. Now Johnson. And Johnson getting a lot of distance on that. Reed leading in the race. Wait. Sliding in Jamison. I reckon Collingwood would like what's happened in the last 10 minutes. Bruce, I don't reckon he really has gone off the boil. It's just the way that the methodology in which they're bringing the ball forward. There's more pressure up the field. On that occasion, it was a long, high, looping ball, and it was Maxwell that did the right thing, big third man up and spoiling the ball. So it's not the way that they were delivering the ball to him in the first quarter. Hampson had an airy, and then Lockyer pushes forward. This, boy, this boy's been good, Reed. Yeah. He's had plenty of the ball. I reckon the one part of his game that he really needs to improve is his kicking. Goes That's down better. inside the 50. We heard you, and the mark is taken by Cloak. So Cloak right on the 50 then. And as you can see, this is a very difficult shot for him if, in fact, he decides to go for it. Indications are, at least early, that he will. Cloak can kick it a long way, and this is working back right to left. Exposed square off hands. Hampson arriving quickly. Knocks it across. On the siren for half time. And Collingwood have taken some big punches from Cal. But they've got to find someone else who's capable of taking a mark and kicking a goal inside their attacking 50. And the Blues relight the fire here. Knocked down by Cloak. Stolen by O'Brien. Kicks it towards the attacking 50. It bounces inside. Going back to Razzo. Medhurst tried to get it across towards Wellingham. Judd throws his body in. Cloak does well at close quarters. Gave it to Reed to Medhurst. 55 metres out here, the umpire. Not 15. Cloak, Swan, steps a would be tackler. 55 metres out. Judd does well. He saw that, Chris Judd. There's no question about that. Even the way he approached that ball, it looked like he actually took a little bit of time to get going. Just watch this. 
Now, that's not the normal spurt of pace, that brilliance that he's had off the mark. Fraser, but it went to Scotland to Carazzo, and then Carazzo to a one on one with Betts and Clark free kick. You made the point during the break, though, too, whether or not this would be the most difficult part for him, Bruce, after he'd actually cooled down at half time. You'd love to get inside their, their rooms, Carlton's rooms, just to see how they approach him when they have that long break, because there's no question that he's not 100% fit. And that was interesting. Betts not putting his boot on and kicking with the left, and O'Brien cutting it off. Now he's got to go back and get that boot. And Marty Clark's on his own for the moment. So Betts caught in a bit of a spot, but they didn't use Clark. Gee, Swan's been busy, hasn't he? Late in that second quarter. And then again early here, Johnson from centre half back. Long ball. Max with the target. Wait very well done. Went early. Cruiser to Judd. So Judd getting involved a bit early, but cut off. Johnson. Stevens was waiting. Over the top. Heath Shaw. So second disposal. Oh, gee, Johnson got around Cruiser a bit too easily. And then kicks to Reshaw, who bounds away. Kicks down towards the 50. Oh. Wellingham got down early, missed the mark. Pushing up the ground. Loose by hand, though, was Russell. Not so their opponents. Johnson got it from Reshaw. Now it's with Reed. Reed's kick inside the forward 50 to a dangerous spot. Oh, Halpin defiantly knocked it away, taken by Murphy. Murphy so much of the football, up to 16 possessions now, coming off a career-high 33 last week. Well, Fisher's the third option up forward. Uh, Waits now gone forward after allowing his colours in the first half to Reed. So that was a good move, and uh, they've shifted Jamison across to Reed. Fisher found Simpson, kick inside the forward 50. Wait almost controlled it. Swan hurriedly finds the boundary line on the bounce. Ten points the margin, as it was at halftime. Played a couple of minutes third term. Michael Malthouse on a big day, as far as he's concerned, personally. But, of course, look at secondary to his magpies, getting over the line and pushing on towards the top four. Fraser towards O'Bree. Judd overran it. O'Bree didn't. And then Shaw's handball to Johnson. Put him in a pretty tight spot. O'Bree's handball to space. Swan and Murphy and Reshaw having a wonderful match to Ben Johnson. Running hard and then delivering to Thomas, who went early. Cloak, just the goals in front of him. For the second time today, he hits the post at the city end. He's had one on the left and one on the right. Gee, what a wonderful opportunity there. Very short getting busy too. Judd's taking him to the ball, but he's got good ball sense himself. He's got great nous. And as soon as it looks like Collingwood are going to win the ball, the ball turns over. He actually positioned himself in an attacking spot. Forgets about Judd for the time being. So Murphy up to 17 after this. He's already a star, but it could be something more, Mark Murphy. There is something about his football that's growing week by week now. The kick from Cloak. Cruiser has been quiet to Gibbs. Has the bounce. Runs to centre field. Went a long way after the bounce. And the mark is taken by Cloak. Driven into the ground by O'Halpin. I think he helped a little. Will Reshaw go here again? Yes, running hard. Reshaw getting in behind the defence. Takes the mark. Realises weight. Not the quickest man in the world. It kicks long. Two men dropping back. Medhurst takes it on the chest. A searching run by Reshaw. Resulting in a real opportunity to stretch the lead. Cameron, if you don't move, I'll pay 50. I'll tell you when it's 50. They got the highest highest kick to handball ratio in the competition, Colin. We just saw an example of that. Two glorious kicks. Quote from half back, Reshaw from the wing position. And look where they end up. Medhurst steps to his left hand side. Check sides are through for his second. Bryce Gibbs is only a kid. He's still learning the game. He's going to be a very good player. But it was really his error in the centre. You see Judd there just not going with Shaw as soon as the ball turns over. And Shaw has done some damage. It was a wonderful kick, though, that put him in space by a cloak. But that kick coming through the centre of the ground there by Gibbs that turned the ball over initially, he actually should have lowered his eyes and kicked the ball to wait. It was only a short kick, but that's the area that the ball should have gone. 
31 goals for the season for Medhurst. Collingwood have kicked six of the last seven goals. They have the big lead in the match today. So Carlton, he made all the running early. Now struggling, Jardwell done to Bentick. And then Bentick inside that 50 off a of bowl and nearly wait. Well tackled by O'Brien and will this ball run away from Clark? No, it was running away but going the wrong way. Oop. So wait forward. Favola had a good snatch at that. Here's Heath Shaw, who we've seen so little of today. A third disposal coming up. He had a handball earlier in this quarter. Such a playmaker, but now being tagged in the back end. The interesting thing, though, is that uh, everyone's been tagging for the last month. Collingwood has still been kicking goals. In fact, they've been kicking bigger scores than they kicked in the earlier part of the year. So I just wonder whether or not that's what you should be doing to try and beat Collingwood because it hasn't been effective at all. So now Maxwell is going to have to go right back to Brown. The only man inside the defensive 50 for the Magpies. Beautiful hole right up the ground. And tries to exploit that. Leading into that hole, Cloak had it knocked away by O'Halp and taken by Burns. Off the ball, Murphy went down, didn't see what happened. Kick inside the forward 50 million time. Getting back is Thornton. Only as far as Medhurst finds a way through, snaps at his third and misses comprehensively. There's real danger signs now for Carlton because the ball is just getting there too regularly and without enough pressure. They just have to keep pressurising Collingwood all over the ground. Cloak got it from O'Halpin and the big guy gets around Brian. It loads up to Fisher, but Maxwell getting back didn't take the mark. O'Brien. Still with O'Brien, that's a good uh, example of what you're talking about, Tim. Coming out of that defensive 50 very easily. Burns to Lockyer. Lockyer with a bit of space here. Time to think about it. Thomas the target. Always flies early. Didac clever. Fraser searching. Going for goal. Very high. Very straight. Very... Well, unlucky. But Medhurst, rather, O'Brien says, that'll do. Goal. Tim, you know, every the other, now and then you can be in the right place at the right time. Well, you know, the other thing about this is that uh, Chris Judd actually conceded. Here's the smart feet of Dida just to kick the ball clear. Here's the snap, and the Carlton players actually conceded. It was Judd that would have been closest to the ball. He stopped running, and then he's looked up right at the end there where the ball stopped, and he's thinking to himself, right at this moment, if only... Margin of 23 points as we get down to Ricky Olorenshaw prowling the boundary. Well, while I was prowling the boundary, I saw that Carlton got another injury concern. There's Armfield on the bike and his right thigh heavily bandaged. He copped a, a ripper corky. He was actually picking up a small hey, forward the in the first half. And he did quite a good job on Davis and Thomas. So they've got to cover him. Still no sign of Sean Grigg on the boundary either. Brian came hard at that centre bounce. Russell got it from Judd. Goes to Stevens. Accelerates away. Kicks it down towards half forward. Pitches in front of the leading player, Betts. Kept it going, though. Knocked it across to Schofield, or rather Scotland, who runs into an open goal and gets it. Chris Judge really had the last two clearances. It's been clever handballs. Just watch this again. Gets right underneath the ball here. Bang. Traps the ball. Squirts it out. And now they're in control. Good running here too by Scotland right up the centre of the ground. Made sure he stayed in the contest. Betts hit the ball really hard. And then Scotland, who started on the wing, a nice finish. It's been a terrific player since coming across from Collingwood. There's uh, Griggs so out of action. We believe he may have a broken rib or two for the rest of the day. So Armfield on the bike and Grigg out of it. Nice space here too. So against the flow... Carlton get one back. Swan bangs it forward. Thomas led underneath it, and so was uh, Cloak. Good tackle by Didac. Thornton didn't really get a good handball away. Brian, bouncing ball. Didac brilliantly done. Got it out to Burns, who hooks back. Midhurst has got it. They are clever. <laughs> He's just brilliant. Oh, 
He never gives up on a situation to me. He creates something and works out how I can get this ball to an advantageous position for my club. I don't know. Look, there's probably been players who are his equal, but I don't know that I've ever seen anyone who's been better at improvising the way that he improvises. In real pressure situations, though, too, when he has hardly any space whatsoever to operate in. Medhurst, big figures again today. Gee, what a recruit he's turned out to be. This is his second season. He's had some very big days for Collingwood. And he's missed that, and he's missed his last two, but let's see if it gets back to hurt them as maybe Fevs misses earlier. Here's this um, kick of Medhurst. It's probably best, isn't he? It's a bit like Stephen Milne. He's at mm. his absolute mm. best when he's running around on the run on a difficult angle. Loves that situation, does he not? As Gibbs kicks in, of course, we help waxing lyrical. Yep. Clubs could pay us to stand on the mark, Bruce, and just talk to these guys. Here's Didac. Again. Goes in short. Got it from Swan. Medhurst with a chance to make amends. Not too late. If the phone rings, one of us will head on down, Bruce. We charge, we charge more for darts. He had to right. crazy. He had to take that. How often do we see that happen? Players just sitting back, just waiting. The ball gets cleared. They've set the zone. And they've got lots of freedom. I'm guessing he'll kick this one. Right post, working it back, does. Good players learn quickly. Hampson's just a kid too, and uh, he doesn't have an enormous amount of body strength, but he just had to take that mark. Here's one beautiful position there, unable to grab hold of the ball. Collingwood players have set the zone. All they need to do here is just keep their head, get the ball in the hands of Didac, and they'll find a free player. And that is the frustrating thing about coaching. A young boy makes an error, and then you pay on the scoreboard. So look at Collingwood. Twice as many. There's a John Elliott on the right, and on the left of Dick Pratt, the cousin, current uh, president, and uh, the former. So Collingwood with 48 disposals to 24 in this third quarter, and they lead by four. Medhurst has kicked 3-2. Swan out of the centre. Cloak. Oh, Halpin. Been a good duel, that one. Oh, Halpin stood up very well. Carato went to ground. Davis over the top. It's been quite Davis. Judd well held. We've talked a lot about his duel with Rhys Shaw. Pendlebury alongside of him for the moment. Or has he gone to Pendlebury? I think Judd has taken that role for the moment. Brian won the tap. Swan is getting a lot of clearances. Murphy, slow handball over the top. Well, the blokes will have to get busy now. Murphy, uh, Judd, also uh, Stevens and Gibbs. I reckon they're their four best midfielders. If they can get those four players around the ball often enough to generate some play, there's some chance. See Gibbs there now manned up against Meadows. There's some chance of actually working their way back in the game. After the boundary throw in, Johnson tied up. So the margin, 24 points. It was 10 at half time. Carlton led by nine at quarter time. It should have been more. Knocked out of there by Brian. He's proving a wonderful foil to Fraser. Judd went to ground. Burns a half chance. Well, not sure about that. Murphy. Strange manoeuvre, trying to win a free kick, weight over the shoulder, taken high Pendlebury, he slams one at Davis, in comes Murphy again, eventually Judd finishes up with the football, well done White, opportunity now for Scotland, back to Judd, Judd loops it over the top, Hampson the big guy, not ideal, falling to the ground, gave it away, Pendlebury, inside the forward 50, Thomas across the path of Medhurst, slipped there by Gibbs, just flicked it away to Jamison, now Russell, to the wing and Cloak opens up for the Blues. Cloak looking down towards half forward decides Carranza would be a wiser move. He kicks towards the pocket for bowl up, draws a double team. Punch comes from Maxwell, still a live ball, at least momentarily helped across the line by that man Clark. Maxwell has been fantastic at doing that since the first quarter. I reckon he's been the third man up on four occasions, and it's really frustrating for Vola now. He's not getting the ball on the lead. Maxwell's getting there in the air and affecting the spoil. Tim, that's plan C, and I think it's working well. Here's Judd trying to impose himself. Oh. 
just not working. It's almost like he needs to be reprogrammed today, Juddy, isn't it? On that, that very was, first kick. You. That, that is because he couldn't kick not when he hard enough through the ball. Mark. He okay. just hasn't got his power through his hips. And certainly A for effort. Now Simpson, a left footer, gets the ball back to a goal square and just missing. The last couple of minutes they've had their hands on the ball though, Carl, which Brennan, is a good sign. They've kicked 4 12, the Blues. Remember last week at three quarter time against Port Adelaide, they were three goals 12. Reid coming used to the body. Going to be a player, Dennis, I think. Yeah, we like him. They've been waiting a while, but they do respect him at Collingwood as the kick goes from Pendlebury close to the boundary line. Gibbs tunnels the ball back through his legs. Johnson close to the boundary line. Worked off the line by Stevens. Lockyer almost got it. Stevens did well in a tight situation to Jamison, to Gibbs. Gibbs from the wing, kicks towards half forward. Coming back with the run of the ball there was Armfield. Got a lot of courage. Knocked it on to Simpson. This may lift the Blues. Now he's off target. I think Armfield is a name for the Black Book as well. Oh. That's Armfield. It might be body felt there though, Dennis. She's courageous. So he's, there's so much to like about him, isn't there? Yes. Clark, short. Just Phil, Tim, that yep. last five minutes, Carlton have had a bit of the footing. Yep. And just haven't been able to put it on the board. But you've got to score. I mean, yep. eventually during the stage of a game, there's going to be ebbs and flows, but when it does flow, that's when you have to hurt the opposition on the scoreboard. A couple of one-twos there, and Burns gets it again. Cloak did well. As I said earlier, I think uh, Halpin and Cloak's been pretty even dual to date. Cloak's kick to the pocket. Well, oh, Medhurst almost. Jamison, Bentick, Scotland. Advantage, the advantage, advantage given comes out to Murphy, having a big game in terms of disposals. Not every one of them has been effective. Last three times the ball's gone in there, though. They've been, a click, they've been effective at their actual rebound, so this is a good sign for Carlton. So Murphy gets it back from Carrazzo, then he stops. Now, he better be careful here. Oh, he, he ducked under Brian. Carato back to Murphy. They're teasing, aren't they? Now Scotland decides to go to Fev. Oh. Timeline. They were patient. Favola decides they don't like these set shots, and then he wastes one, doesn't he? And now Clark gets it. And just jogs off in another direction as Clark goes in short. Finds Johnson. Fraser. Fraser in midfield, Stevens got him, forces the error, Cruiser onto the loose ball, not a lot of support, plenty of numbers around, but I think Burns is going to beat them all and fight a draw. How good was that for Collingwood? Now the reason why Murphy stopped that is because Collingwood had been get that extra number back, it was Dane Swan who filled that space in front of Favola, then they had to kick the ball so wide and Fev just lost confidence in his long kicking. That can happen to most people. I don't like to see it kicking into the man on the mark, but you've got to work afterwards. Getting through Armfield has the bounce. Terrific Shepherd from Simpson. Armfield's kick. Off target, it bounces out of bounds in the pocket. After Fev kicked into the man on the mark, it was the best and worst of Fev, really. The mark was good on the strong lead, but then just jogged on a 45-degree angle when the man behind the man on the mark who got the football was pushing back in his direction. He actually went off on a tangent. Not the first time. Murray Favolian out of defence. <laughs> Fraser's kick is marked by Scotland. Good kick. Who kicks for space. Beautiful kick. And White running to that space has taken the mark. Closer to goal than Favola moments ago. But on the same angle. Scotland coming off. Well, that's an interesting interchange. They meet about 25 metres. Off the line. No, that was um, that was for Bentick bets going on. Uh, Fisher oh, came on for Scott. There was a previous one, was there? Meantime, back at the game, Wake puts it through for a goal. Well, the Blues might be praying for some rain. It's getting pretty dark here at the MCG. I read an article this morning. Written by Chris Judd, he reckons they're a better wet weather side because they actually play together as a team. They might rely on two or three players being their brilliant players when it's dry, but when it's wet, they seem to be able to function better and share the ball. That was terrific kick then to Wade, who started at the top of the square. And they've had the better of Collingwood in the last five minutes. 
Good goal. They're hanging in there down to you, Rick. Well, I reckon Collingwood, Collingwood have realised that Judd is not at his physical peak. So what they're now doing is Swan and Shaw are rotating through him and double teaming. Shaw's just had about a five-minute spell on the bench and gone back to him. But I think they just think they can work off him offensively. Murphy still mate, still having mate. a big game. Inside the 50 for Vola. Brilliantly. Betts just didn't quite back to Judd. Wonderful handball. Arnfield. They've got a bit of belief. They're not done yet. Here they come. The Judster's still in this match, isn't he? Well, as long as he's out there, a real chance of winning. But once again, it was Murphy who won the ball in the centre of the ground. Sometimes, Favola and he saw just um, checking haircuts and uh, who's got the most spike there. But sometimes it's not a great kick that you need. That's almost a throw there from Brendan Favola. That was just a tap with the hand. Betts was able to grab hold of the ball. But the ball went forward, and that was the most important thing. Martin has 10 points. Not sure what this is all about. Who's got the longest? Back in the middle. 8-11 to 6-13. So we've had 14 goals. It's the sort of game, Tim, that could give us another 10. It could break wide open. It's been about defence so far. Can they kick defending at this rate? Scotland kicks it out towards the wing. Thomas overran the football, died at. The man of many feet comes through, used his left that time, flicks it away to Thomas. Thomas has a couple of bounces, loves this situation. Too clever by half, chopped off by Gibbs. Hand passes across to White. Rebound opportunity for the Blues. Low down to Betts, gets a hand pass to the run of Murphy. Coming up to his 25th possession. Could be another career high today for Bowler to the pocket. And again, the ball goes out of bounds. Just wonder about the wisdom of that deep pocket lead. Talk well, about, that's, that's school stuff. Talk about degrees of difficulty. Cloak bounces around in there. Fraser could have been taken high. O'Bree, Pendlebury, up towards the wing. Good running mark taken by Lockyer. Terrific, wasn't it? And a good kick in board to Clark, who's run off his man. Reshaw running hard. Reshaw over the top to Cloak. Cloak from 49 metres. That is a wonderful team goal. Cool. That was beautifully called then, Bruce. That was a wonderful team goal. They had players running. As soon as that ball turned over, the Collingwood players prepared in the stacks. He ran into space, and that's what created that goal. They had the options all the way down. All the players went to O'Brien. It was he that started it at half back. But that's a great finish. And Cloak just giving a mouthful to someone on the way through. I had a bit to say after he kicked that goal, too. So, again, it's the a time. challenge squarely with the Blues. It is a time to say it if you've got something to say, though, Dennis. That's right. As long as it doesn't come back to bite you. Opportunity for O'Brien now. Next goal, pretty important. Five and a half minutes out from three-quarter time. Wellingham has got it. 75 metres from home. Cloak gives a lead. Play on's the call. Cloak virtually only 20 metres away now. Kept on coming. Long kick. Good mark taken in defence by Carranza. He's done a good job. Carranza across the ground. Simpson's going to be on here. Look up. Cruiser. Sweeping hand pass to the man Tim mentioned. Now he can run it virtually to half forward. There's no Collingwood players between him and the 50 metre arc. Swan is the only one. Swan came to him late, belatedly, but affected the error. It bounces down inside the forward 50. O'Brien into the clutches of Judd. Got a hand pass away. Over the top goes Wakeland. Diving in there is Fisher. Tried to kick it on one knee. Judd comes again. And the ball ricochets off his body and goes out of bounds in the right full forward pocket. I think it's a free kick to um, is it to Wakeland, is it? It may have come off his leg and then on the fall. Is that the call or is it coming back to Wakeland for something? I think it's back to Wakeland. So Cruiser off the ground. Oh. We saw, gee, that's a poor kick. Medhurst kicked it in and that's a 
Another pretty average kick, Betts. Well done, Reshaw, just to stop Betts' oh. running. Gee, that was a free kick free. to Betts. Betts did well. Fev goes to full forward. Fisher, not quite. Yes. Umpire saying front on contact then. So Fisher is in a bit of a drought personally with goals in the last month. Keeps Carlton very much in the match. Gee, Betts was good a minute ago, wasn't he? He was, and that was set up by the fact... He, just watch this again. There's the incidental front on contact. I reckon that's a tough call on Collingwood. Just watch it again. Wakeland coming in from the side. And I reckon, look, I reckon he got more arm contact than he did chest contact. He did come in front on. Matt Fisher, who kicked his first AFL goal on debut against Collingwood, round two, 2003. Then he kicked at least one goal in his next nine games. Cruiser with the trainers. A lot of goals from free kicks this afternoon. Hampson waits. Now we've got a whistle and a free kick going Carlton's way. Not sure what that was about. Was it a centre square infringement? But going on, Simpson storms through, sends it long for Bowler, checks off the ball and takes a wonderful mark. Well, it's about instinct sometimes. He knew the drop zone there well before Brown did. Did the equation, kept him out of the area, and then at the last moment, plucked it. That's a good strong mark, but the other important thing about that, Dennis, too, is the fact that Collingwood couldn't get that third man up into the contest then because the ball just got down there too quickly. Pavola comes in and kicks his fourth. In fact, he's third. Yeah. Well, Macca, we sort of sensed yeah. this coming, didn't we? About uh, 10 minutes ago, Carlton just slowly started to win the 50-50 contest. They started to control the ball. Collingwood were going forward, but they weren't doing anything with the ball. And I reckon when you've got a midfield which has the depth of talent that Carlton currently has, you're always going to be a chance at actually getting back into the contest and winning those stoppages. Big effort by Fev. Down to you, Ricky. You can see Matthew Cruiser there in the hands of the doctors. Actually, he's bleeding from the mouth. And I just had to check to see if he's got any broken teeth and also a broken jaw. But that's been given the all clear. So I reckon we'll see him in this last quarter. So they're one man down, aren't they, with Griggs? So hopefully Cruiser can come back. He had a big last quarter last week. So did the Blues. Pendlebury. And he wanted to give off and then wasn't sure. But Scott, uh, rather, Lockett yeah, yeah, was yeah, good. Yeah. And then Didact to Clark. Worked underneath it by O'Halp, and I think Thornton wants this to run out, and it does. Well, what a good comeback this has been by Carlton. I mean, Collingwood were four goals in front and looking home 15 minutes ago. And the Blues very much alive. Brian, that was good. And then Swan cleverly are behind. Armfield has now gone to Heeshaw too. Now, I think that's a really good move because Carlton aren't sacrificing one of their better midfielders to actually sit down. As we see Griggs there just being tested to see whether or not he's capable of coming back on the ground. Looks like he passed that test. He might be OK. Just as well, wasn't Francis Burke conducting it? Yes. The team bumper called into action. Close to the boundary line. In fact, it runs out ahead of Simpson. It was Francis Burke that tested Mickey Malthouse's uh, shoulder, wasn't it, on the eve of the That's 1981 right. Grand Final? A severe workout from all accounts. Tossed in. Brian slaps it down in front. Wellingham, crowd one high, nothing doing. So it's set up now, five points the difference. Carlton need to hold here. And a reprieve for Ratton, who thought, I'm sure, a few minutes ago this game was gone, but it has, as we predicted, opened up. Now Swan a chance to score a goal. It just drifts away and misses narrowly. He's had four shots for goal, though, Dennis. He kicked his first in the last three, one out of bounds on the fall and a couple of behinds. 20 possessions for Dane Swan. Coming off, by his standards, a quiet day last week. Now Scotland 
Runs it up to right half back. Oh. Maybe the Blues can lead at three quarter time. Not with that kick. That was poor play. They just didn't have that secondary lead. He had to lower his eyes and go to the first lead then. Maxwell to Johnson. Quarter of half back. Brian Ambles to possession. Over committed almost bets. And Brian kicks from the center square. Cruz has got to go here. G a bit of courage for a boy that might have had. You know, a broken tooth or two and a jaw that's pretty sore. Don't you love to see that from a young player? So one bandage to another, eh? Cruiser to Fisher. Simpson's been very good. He's run hard in this quarter. Scotland's been good this quarter too. In fact, so good Mick Moldhouse has decided to take Ben Johnson off Stevens and now put him running with Heath Scotland. Back to Cruiser. Good and boy. Cruiser takes off and then goes to Favola. Held on to. <laughs> That's a lot of guts by Cruiser. That is terrific. I mean, that is the hardest spot on the ground to fill. When you slide back into that hole and you know the kick's been directed to a marking forward, no doubt about that free kick. Well, this will get a reaction. Can Fev put them in front? It's been a lot about Fev today. It's all about Fev. It's a good kick. They're in front. The Blues are in front. Ties it up, I should say. All square. What a comeback it has been, too. Oh. I mean, we'll just... It doesn't really matter what the result of this game is in terms of Carlton and their development. I reckon this game will earn them enormous respect in the competition. You, you feel like they belong on the big stage after watching them today, don't you? That's right. I mean, it's the first right. of many big games they're going to play now, this yep, group. That's exactly right, and uh, this would give them enormous confidence. They came back last week beautifully, too, against Port Adelaide, so they know that they've got the ability. Pavola with four goals then. Cruiser. After that strong mark, so valuable last week in the closing stages against Port. Six goals from free kicks, three apiece, and five Carlton goals in the last 16 minutes, and four quick goals, so this game now has broken open. Chances for both clubs to be taken. Can they take them? Getting back, O'Brien feeds it to Wakeland, kicks it down towards Harford. Thornton did well. Dismissive of Thomas that time. Just pushed him away. And the indication is we're going to slow it down. At least we think that's what it stands for. Things happen of this ilk when they do what he did. Thornton's got it back again. Clock is down to 13 seconds. Goes across the ground to Bentick has run hard. So now there's not enough time for a score. Dennis, when they, have, when they have the momentum, though, I, I mean, know. surely as a group of players, they can feel the momentum's with them. That's when they should hammer home the advantage. Final term of the G, then. Fev gave the talk to the Carlton players at three-quarter time, or part of it. I'd love to have heard Cruiser. Brian goes up and knocks it down. There's going to be a free kick. No, play on's the call. Foot for a moment. Pendlebury might get one. Jump dispossessed, taken by Cloak. Kicks inside the forward 50, weight in front. Wonderful balance shown by Maxwell. Then he took too long for Bowler, going at number five. How will it bounce? It's still alive. Football hasn't been touched. Getting back, Shaw escorts it across the line, and the Blues lead it. Great to, see, great to see Favola backing up his words there with that approach and tackle on the ball. Then that's a great example to be setting to the other players in the early part of this quarter. Shaw quickly inbounding the ball. Finishes up with Thomas. Up towards Reese Shaw, trapped it to his own advantage, back to the run of Thomas, goes down towards half forward, brilliant. Reed's got it, wheels around on the left foot, where will he go? Long down towards full forward, needs a kind bounce, Davis, gets it and goes in, kicks the goal. Well, Thomas had two important touches, and they'll need his speed on the wing, but that's just another example of this paddock that they employ from time to time. Here's the tackle from Favol. That's terrific stuff. Then he was able to win the ball, but they weren't able to do enough with that. There's Thomas's kick. Good play here by Reed. Notice as the players leading up the ground. OK, we've got Davis on Gibbs. Leg speed advantage our way. Perfect pass.
keeps his record going, Leon Davis. A goal in each of the 12 matches he's played this year. He's been quiet. There was a real query on him coming into this game. He was sore last Monday. It's an ankle injury, but he's done well to get himself up for this game. Just seven kicks, but an important goal. Brian got over the top of Cloak on that occasion, and then Cloak toe pokes it forward. Scotland tapping forward. Lockyer with him. They've both been good players. Back to Judd. What sort of an influence can the champion have on the last quarter? Russell got it to Murphy, who's been outstanding. That kick to Fisher, dropped the footy, got it back to Wait. Wait, who kicked a goal in that term, lace out to Fev. Well, he was missing these, Tim in the first half, but I reckon his confidence is back, don't you? Yeah, sky high. Now, that was really good play there by Fisher. Met the ball really hard, kept the ball alive, and Wait just keeping his head and a beautiful low spearing pass to Fev. He's kicked 4 5. He's had 11 shots for goal today. Can he put them back in front? It's not going to be a goal. It was a careful kick. So, four goals, six. From Favola, it's one of the big, big stories, if not the story of the match so far. That range is really troubling him, isn't it? Yep. I mean, he's lost his confidence in his ability to be able to kick those long goals. He's never kicked more than six behinds in his career. Not the sort of records you want to repeat today Ooh. on the big stage. Now off the ball, Cloak is down, didn't see what happened. Maxwell's got the football, goes to Lockyer, hand passes to Johnson. The centering kick, they'll compete about 15 metres out. The big leap from Didak off hands and across the line. Cloak's on his feet. Any idea what happened, Tim? Well, look, I didn't see the incident, but I saw the player closest to him, and it was Ben Johnson. Carranza has got it. What does that mean, Dennis? Johnson was closest to him. Gibbs has got the football. And canny resemblance to our producer, Glenn Postle. Cloak back in the action. Jamison. Now an opportunity for Russell. Bentick kicks inside the forward 50. Through the hands of Favola. He got in front, but the ball went to the back. Maxwell under pressure. Reese Shaw. Judd shrugs one tackle. One foot Clark goes short. Touch of brilliance. Well, you can't coach that. Simply put it down to Chris Judd's parents. Just watch the bottom left of the ben screen Johnson. here. Metres, Thank you. That was a bump there Pretty by sure. Ben Johnson. Sure long way from the ball. It was a long way from the ball, but it was there was no head contact there. It just seems that it might have actually got him under the rib cage and winded him. Was it a Stevie Baker? Who knows with that tribunal? Simpson comes in. And this one misses to the right-hand side. Favola moments ago putting it left. And the margin is four points. Carlton with the ascendancy. Three points now this afternoon for Simpson. That's all that he's kept. He's still goalless. Nathan's ball! It was Judd that got... Nathan's ball! Nathan ball! Nathan! There's an incident off the field. It was Judd that was actually standing next to Nathan Brown, so he must have done something there that the umpire spotted. It was Judd that got them over the line last week, Bruce, with a massive last quarter. Can he do it again? Geez, play a moment ago was terrific. Cloak, nearly... Had a couple of little grabs at it, O'Halpin, back to Fisher. Bentick. Not a great kick, Thomas. So I reckon O'Halpin's dicing with death if he's just expecting one of the other Carlton players to spoil Clark. He's got to go with him in a contest like that. He can't expect someone else to actually clear the ball or spoil the ball for him. Thomas goes to the top of the goal square. Fisher... In danger here. Uh, here. No, nearly kicked. Yes, touch him, mate. I know, he doesn't have to touch him. It's just dangerous. So <laughs> Fisher the against Didak. Didak thinking so quickly again there. Take a really good umpire to think as quickly as Didak. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Murphy in a contest. Carazzo back to Judd. He's finding a bit of space, the champ. Running hard, kick a wobbly one, inside 50, Maxwell leading, wait, wait, brought him down, Armfield off the outside, Favola, oh, oh. is it a free, Favola's kicked the most remarkable goal, Fev, you little beauty! Oh, 
Oh, they should blow the siren. Well, it's been trademarked, that goal by Alan Dynak. I'm not sure whether he gets a royalty every time we see one of these goals kicked, but we've seen a few since he did it. There's the contest. Wait just took Maxwell out of the contest. Here's the great one-on-one -on -one battle. For bo both of them left, lost their foot. Uh, uh, just one of the great, stuff. great contests in footy, that was. Uh, Dennis, that's like at training when the coach used to pair you off and say, OK, off you go, you two, just compete against each other. It's just a beautiful one-on-one -on -one contest. What's that synchronised kicking? Oh. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Carlton getting on top in the contested possessions in this quarter two. Judd's been big in the last five Magnificent. minutes. Magnificent. Carlton by two points wow. then on the way down. Josh Fraser, only as far as Bentek. Shrugs one tackle. Fraser was waiting for him and nabbed him on the way out. Another ball up. One of the goals of the season from Fev. He's got five. Five, six. It's a Franklin-like return. Knocked down by Fraser once more. Judd in the thick of the action. Cloak needed a bit more on that one. O'Brien steals it away, just sets it up towards the 50. Juggled attempt at the mark down there by Russell. In the opposite direction, Swan. Carrazzo goes after it. Davis has got it. Judd's got him. Davis slips a hand pass away to Swan. Lockyer is clear. Runs to the 50. Despairing lunge by Simpson. Affected the kick. Well, Thomas flew very early. Socket off the ground by O'Halpin. And it's out of bounds. I'm not sure he touched anyone on the way up or down, Thomas. It was just a jump for jumping sake. <laughs> <laughs> jumping with excitement. Like we are in the box right now. This has been some sort of a match. Swan going through and putting Collingwood right back where they want to be. He's powerful, Swan. He's got enormous strength through his core, but you just wonder at this part of the ground, at this stage of the game, how he can get off his man like that. It was Chris Judd who was right on him. He just wasn't able to get the first tackle to be effective in any way. Here he goes again. The ball just actually clears the marking jewel, uh, the uh, ruck jewel, and he got into position A and just cleaned it up. 22 disposals, a couple of goals from Swan. So good in the stoppages and clearances. Thomas taking a breather. What a wonderful match we're seeing. This is a blockbuster. Cloak, Betts, Judd in every play, it seems, at the moment. And then Betts getting it forward only a little way. Fraser, good tackle. Well done, Betts. Back to Waite. Waite did nicely. Slips it away to Judd. Under pressure. May have been touched off the boat. No. Mark is played. It went precariously close to the boot. And Favola will line up at number six, and Judd is lifting like the champion he is. And if you want to know why he's getting the ball now, Reese Shaw's actually gone off him. He's gone to Murphy. Now, this is just an example of a very deep pool of midfield players. You've got to shut down the number one. They believed, or Mick Malthouse did a three-quarter time, because Murphy had to stop. I just wonder whether or not Reese Shaw will go back to the dangerous Judd now. For Carlton to regain the lead. And he gets it. He started the day 11 behind Franklin. He's closing in. Well, Macca, he was dangerous in the first quarter when he got on the lead. They actually have been able to shut the lead down the last couple of quarters because they've been able to get on top of Carlton's midfield. But then when you've got supply like that, you've got speed off the mark like Brendan from Vola has, that's when he comes into his own. 6-6 six, is six, kicking. Judd's kick off the outside of the boot was outstanding. It was a... Magic moment. So Carlton just in front of the centre clearances and three to zip in the last quarter. Reese Shaw's gone back to Judd now. Well, you and Mickey Moldhouse are in sync, Tim. So the changes of lead in this last quarter. It's pulsating stuff. Cruiser timed at best. Murphy high. Gee, no. OK. Hard to get a free kick now. No. Cross there, cross there. Thanks, Scott. So the first contact wasn't low, and then Murphy milked it, and the umpire in a good spot. Put it on. Cruiser 
Man on man stuff. Murphy paddles it forward. O'Brien was onto him. Didac. Heard the umpire. Play it on. Burns does just that. Runs hard. Kicks to Wellingham. Got him. Good kick. Gibbs a bit lucky there that Wellingham wasn't that be able to run on because Gibbs just went to ground. There's Cloak up in front of him. Wellingham, who hasn't played in a losing team, kicks to the hot spot. Cloak almost. Road by Davis. Left foot. Missing. We talked about the forward line before the start of the match. Just how important will the forward line of Midhurst and Davis and Didac and Thomas be in the concluding 15 minutes? Well, they're hard to shut down for 120 minutes of football. They're going to come into their own at some stage. You've just got to apply enough pressure. When they get into that goal-scoring range, you've got to apply that pressure. We saw Leon Davis then. It was just the extra pressure from Carlton that stopped the kick. Stevens to himself, and he drives it. Towards our broadcast side, head down, Heath Shaw taken down, the umpire will ball it up. So with seven minutes to go in the third term, we had a total of 14 goals. Now we've got 22 and still an age to play. And I think we said at the time, as predictable as my haircut, this game would open up in the run home. Over the top, Cruiser knocks it down. And a free kick is going to Judd off the ball against Reece Shaw. My word, he's playing a last turn. He goes across the ground. Ambitious kick, but Fortune favours the ball as the ball goes inside the forward 50 from Russell, and the mark is taken down there by Wiggins, 40 metres out directly in front. You know, I reckon having Chris Judd in the side, apart from his individual brilliance, it just gives the Carlton players so much confidence, doesn't it? At a critical stage of the game, there's a free kick, clearly a free kick. But you just see the Carlton players rising to the occasion. I mean, he's more than just a leader. So Wiggins. No, he can be an inspiration. It's proving that way now. Wiggins from 53. Not a bad looking kick. Now it's sliding towards the right off hands and out of bounds. Good result for Carlton. Stays locked in. They lead by a point. Over 11 minutes to go. Murphy, 33 last week, is career high. He got 27 at the moment. And Swan has been busy too. Tracking that ball through Stevens, a half chance. Maxwell stood in his path. Now Wiggins, much closer to goal. Snaps and gets it. Margin seven points. Well, he actually took a very courageous mark a moment ago too and wasn't able to finish it off. That's really poor play there by Maxwell who should have been able to snap with that ball. But great play by Wiggins to go back in there and win the ball and then screw it around the outside. There he is just snatching it away from Maxwell and he's playing inspired football at the moment. What a terrific effort by Wiggins. To give Carlton Guys, not ball, breathing wait, wait, wait. space, but more than a goal lead. How long can Judd keep going in the centre here? Betts, oh. Maxwell, Judd tackling. Back to Nathan Brown, belting it inside 50. Cloak did well, yeah, yeah, yeah. got rid of his man. Back to Didac, back to Swan. And then Swan's left foot to Pendlebury. Betts created a contest. Davis has got pretty busy in this last quarter. Hooking back. It won't be a goal, but Medhurst kicks his fourth. Free kick. Two Ooh. actions there. The umpire's indicating a push. She missed. <laughs> wow. Big call. Now, Stevens. Hasn't looked up, but he was going to the interchange. Betts, good mark. Gee, Betts has got busy too, hasn't he? This is some of the gutsiest umpiring I think I've ever seen. Here's a free kick again. There's the push from Menhurst in the side, I would have thought. Where was the ball? How close, Tim? I reckon it was in the five-metre range, Dennis, ah. without running a tape over. Hampson's got it. So Hampson told to play on. The Queenslander drives it down towards half forward. Almost the clever mark down there to Brian. Oh, slapped it the wrong way. Simpson's got it. Can he work it back? 
Down goes Fev. Oh. Fev roots it back in somehow and kicks another one. <laughs> Two of the most amazing goals in this term to Brendan Favola. Two different guys he's done it to, too. Nathan Brown and now Harry again. Harry's going to have nightmares about this play, isn't he? <laughs> There's a free kick again. I mean, that is a doubtful free kick, OK? I thought Harry was away here, but he just wasn't able to take the ball cleanly with him. And Fev stayed in the contest. Watch his reaction here from the coach. He's a young coach, Brett Radney. He rides every bump, every handball, and every kick. Well, it's all about Fev. What a remarkable performance he's put on today. Collingwood hate that decision about Medhurst. It looked a big call. Well, Collingwood have got some work to do. Judd keeps getting his hands on it. Betts was held up. Well done, Eddie Betts. Terrific effort, though, by Collingwood through Brown. And then Cruz are getting involved. For Vola, not quite off the ground. Simpson getting there, Maxwell, Maxwell just rushing it over. Well, they've got a real chance now, Collingwood. Judd has just come off the ground for a rest. Bentick's come on, he's free at the moment, he's running up into the midfield. We see a 50-metre penalty being awarded to Brown again at centre-half back. So, Brown's kick. Collingwood, I reckon, a one goal away here from being out of it. It's unbelievable, I'm saying that. Carrazzo goes back. They won a close one last week, the Blues. They've been good in last quarters. Grigg, he's got those injured ribs under pressure. Gets it outside the danger zone. And Scotland runs it over the line. It's amazing. Now it goes on the forward line for Carlton. It's like watching a rerun of The Illusionist. I mean, you just hold your breath, don't you, with Fev? Hasn't he turned it around? A lot of shots from long range have missed today, but... He's been special in this final term. Pendlebury wins a hard ball. Swan pushed off the kick, taken by Gibbs. No margin to work with. That was a precise kick. Russell, a couple of metres in from the line. Gibbs keeping his head. Surrounded by pandemonium. The kick around the other side towards the wing. Good mark in front, not paid. Cloak came to ground almost with a football. Didn't drag it in. I don't know how injured Leon Davis is, Dennis, but uh, I think they've got to do with him what Carlton have done with Eddie Betts in the early part of this last quarter, and that's just pushing him up around the ball, particularly at the stoppages. Judd, seven possessions in this term. Brian knocks it down from the hands of Pendle, Breeder Burns. High ball, courage required. Everyone put in there. It spoils, though. It comes down towards Thomas. He kicks inside the forward 50. Certainly spoiled now for Carlton as the ball comes from Cloak to O'Brien. Spots a man in the square. And this time, no interference involved. Medhurst is marked directly in front, five metres out. That was a great interchange there by Collingwood because O'Brien just came on the ground. He was a spare player. As we see, Meadows just popped one through. He's got four. Well, Judd's off the ground at the moment. Ben Johnson's just come back on with Wellingham. So they've got a little bit of freshness back into their midfield, Collingwood. Thomas got hold of that ball. Smart handball out there by Swan. And there's O'Brien who's just come on the ground. He's going to have a shot on his left foot. In the end, it was Medhurst that made the space in the right part of the ground. He's played well, Medhurst. He's had 20 disposals, kick 4-2. Yeah, he's pushed uh, up pretty high at different stages of the game, but he's got a good pair of hands. He's more than just a one-trick pony as we look at Chris Judd on the bench. So Judd, who's had this huge influence in the last quarter, getting ready for one last assault. Medhurst's fourth goal, bring Collingwood... Very much back into the frame. Cloak went early. Fraser won the tap. O'Brien, who's good play a moment ago. Terrific tackle, though, on Fraser. Cloak's handball, OK. Russell to Grigg. I bet you the coach will single him out at the end of the match if they win. Grigg kicks towards full forward. Favola, wait. Back with wait. Still with wait. Can steady and go now.
And Favol is creating mayhem down there because every time they go there, they want to wrestle him and he's creating space. Well, that was a great tackle in the centre of the ground there by Wiggins. He's played inspired last quarter of football too. So it hasn't just been about their ability to control the ball. They've been doing the hard stuff as well, Carlton. And here's Favol, the battle against Harry O'Brien. And then it was a secondary forward there, Wait, And Brown just should have stuck to his hips. He'll be showing that during the week. Don't follow the ball, son. So the margin, 14 points. Eddie Maguire knows it's slipping away, but he'd be buoyed by the fact that Collingwood have shown a lot of fight all season long. This is not beyond them. But again, as we said before about that kick going forward for Collingwood, no margin for error. One down by Cloak. Judds over the football, immediately attracts a crowd. They'll do it again. So Judd, despite all the problems, 23 possessions now. Are we sure with him? They look on as Maxwell doesn't quite middle it. O'Brie helps it on its way. Getting back is Simpson. Scotland, one more goal could seal it for the Blues. And look at the men they've got free. Bentick is running hard up ahead. Wait bypasses him. Bentick could still get the crumb, no. Not forward by Wakeland eventually. That man Bentick bobs up. Stevens in trouble. Goes looking for Bentick, holding the ball to call against Stevens. Collingwood wasting no time. Johnson's kick up towards the wing, and the ball runs out of the interchange gates. Well, Carlton, if they win this today, go into the eight. And they haven't been in the eight in the second half of a season since 2001. It's been a long, long time. Judge, well done. Cloak, Ben Tick ridden down. That was a good tackle, actually. The, the tackle was rolled there by Lockyer. What about Judd? He's come back onto the ground. Both times he's got hold of the ball, but Reese Shaw's been right on him. He's been able to actually lock him up. This is important stoppage for Collingwood. <laughs> Still enough time for the Maggies. Cloak improvising. It's been one of those games. Bentick finding some space to Gibbs, one of the guys that Tim talked about at three-quarter time. Carazzo to a bit of space. Waite's been important with a couple of goals. Bentick getting involved. Back to Carazzo. Important kick. Decides just to go long and hope. Fev not getting into it that time. And Shaw has been so quiet. Heath Shaw, believe it or not, just a fifth disposal. And here's the big H. He's had a, a day he's going to remember for a long time. Fev chasing hard. O'Brien's kick not all that good. Rollingham in trouble. Taken down by Russell. Oh, Held to him, says the umpire. The veteran, Hayden Kennedy. Had the right idea then, Harry O'Brien, to cut up the centre and try and hit the target, but the kick wasn't effective. Mick Malthouse oh. having a big day. We're talking about games. Well, Hayden Kennedy, 4.24 for him. Every stoppage since he came back on the ground, Chris Judd, he's actually been the first player to win the ball, but Rich Shaw's been able to lock him up. He'll get a handball out soon. One down by Fraser, but to the wrong man. Stolen away by Stevens inside the forward 50. Leading in the race towards the boundary. Heath Shaw wants the boundary. Now, the umpires have been brave all day long. Ooh. Perhaps it wasn't deliberate. No, he's on the wrong side then. It was deliberate, but the umpire didn't really see it clearly enough to give a decision. Boundary throw in. Over the top. Fraser once more. Judd crashes the pack. Lost it, though. Yeah. Taken by Maxwell. Disputed footy. Gibbs starting to have that influence. Lovely kick to Murphy. One number one draft pick to another. Hold it, hold it. What's he going to do here, Murphy? Called to play on. Decides to pop it up. Can Fisher take a mark or bets? Built it away by Clark. O'Brien, Judd, still with Judd. Handball out, Ben Tick. He's been good in the last five minutes. To Stevens, he's a good kick, Stevens. They're home. The Blues are going to have one of the biggest wins in many a year. Look at that celebration. Bruce, I know we've been talking about this all afternoon, but it's their depth of talent right across the ground. Here's Gibbs. Each time the ball has gone to a one-on-one -on -one type contest, it had the capacity to actually win that one-on-one -on -one contest. There's Judd Spurts, one out. Bentick's a good play. Gives it over to Stevens, who's a good player. He's been pretty quiet today. But they've just got that level of... Well, it would seem the Blues have got the Magpies number this season. 
Hard to tell from those expressions whether they're in front or behind. Keep a lid on it, says the prayers. That's back in the middle. Backhanded down by Clark Judd again. Got a hand pass intended for Murphy. Stolen away by Abri almost. Reese Shaw was led. Advantage is paid. Swan gallops down towards the 50. Runs to 45 and shoots. And what's he done? It hit the post. Ricocheted off the post and hit the goal umpire. I reckon it hit the actual ins inside of the post, not the outside of the post, not down the guts of the post. The fat bit. It actually just faded to the fat bit. Just watch this. Yep. Just touching, just kissing the padding. It's a good kick. It was coming back. Well, Gibbs having a big last quarter. This is interesting. How do Carlton play the next four minutes, Tim? I mean, they're sitting on what should be a match-winning lead. Do they play defensively no. like that? No. Or do they keep trying to score goals? Because scoring goals has been good for them. Medhurst has kicked four. He's normally a very, very clever player. Good kick inside, but Jamison's closing speed, terrific. Cloak road it OK, gets it back. And then Judd, who's been in so much of this last quarter. He's been unbelievable in this last quarter, Chris Judd. He's now had 25 touches. He's touched the ball seven times since he came back on the Come ground. On. Back to Swan. Swan's been terrific to Aubrey. Aubrey in desperate trouble. Tackled by Russell. Free kick to the Blues. And I'll bring it back. So just over three minutes to go. Clock is stopped. Russell is cramped up. Nothing suspicious there. Aubrey knew the footy was coming. And somebody said, look out. Russell just pops it to the wing. Murphy have to be in contention as BOG, I'd suggest. Coming up to his 30th possession. Play on's the call. Simpson presents. Come on, Carlton. You've got him on the ropes. Just keep going. I think this is OK now. You're a hard taskmaster. As they work it around, Thornton got it from Russell. 19 points. Just over two and a half minutes. Thornton to the wing. In front, Cruiser. Going after it, Thomas. Thomas, a little chip. Wellingham hasn't had the best of days. Cloak, still time if he kicks this. Runs to 50. They need a goal. Didak from behind. Off hands, minor score. He had mid his short cloak there, didn't he? I think he thought... Hmm. Will I or won't I? And in the end, he... He didn't really have a ping at the goals either. No. He actually kicked to the top of the square. He was within range, but, but it's been a long afternoon for him. He's done a mountain of work right up and down the ground. He might be getting a little bit tired. And this makes North Melbourne a bit nervous, I reckon. Some Kilda. Carlton in the eight. Hey, there's no reason why Carlton can't continue to improve throughout the course of this season. I think we've already seen that since the start of the season, how much they've improved. But this group given how many early draft picks they have in their team, is capable of continuing to improve right up until the finals. They play the Bombers and the Tigers in the next fortnight, Carlton. And the last two wins for them, Tim, you think about that comeback against Port Adelaide last Sunday night and also today. We started the day with Sticks. He'd be loving it. <laughs> Arguably the greatest captain the Blues have ever had, and they've had some good ones, and they've got a good one right now. They've had Big Nick and they've had Sticks and they've got Juddy. Armfield's been impressive. Pushing forward. Swan's been terrific. Here's Johnson running it out of defence. Close to the boundary. Going back Fisher. Interesting, Michael Malthouse put the topic of BFS. Blockbuster fatigue syndrome on the agenda last week. Maybe his players believed it. Still mate, mate. Carrazzo. Now uh, Gibbs, just putting the exclamation mark on this victory. Jamison, told to play on, steps cloak nicely. Jamison back in the side, relishing the situation. The attendance over 80,000 today. Bentick, a hand pass. Scotland from 25 metres. How sweet that is. The former magpie. The icing on a cake that they will relish this week. Emotions spilling over at the G.
And he's been really good since halftime. This is Jamison just taking the game on. We wanted them to do this, Carlton, right up until the final siren. They've got the capacity to do this. They've got the talent out there on the field. Good play by Bentic just to protect the ball in the mark. And that is, according to Heath Scotland, a beautiful finish. Played in two grand finals for the Magpies. So the former pie putting some cream on a beautiful cake, as Dennis said. And for Michael Moldhouse, 0-2 against the Blues this year. It's been a memorable afternoon at the G. Eddie Betts has been good turn this last quarter coming out of the centre. Scotland, still Scotland. It's his own footy at the moment. One last one for Fev. Oh, this would be something. Kick seven today, he kicked seven in round four against Collingwood. That's there, great there play there bunnies. by his Scotland. That was a great play there by his Scotland. Oh, the way that he actually won the ball, ran through a couple of tackles. He hasn't liked this distance all afternoon. Well, this he's tired, he... he's been going all day. It's a tough, tough kick. Kicked a goal after the final siren last week. This would equal his career best of eight and give him 50 for the season. It's looking good. It's going and going. He's equaled his career best. It's been all about Fev. Carlton by five goals over the arch enemy. 17-17 to 12-17. And Macca, they did it the hard way too. They actually had to win this game. They came out after half time. They were four down. They battled away, they were terrific.